Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we're going to be continuing our series looking at the VestaBoard demo that we made for the Niagara Summit. Previously, we've gone over some of the basics, the infrastructure, the whole uh, structure about how the system worked from the sensor to a JACE to a supervisor talking to the VestaBoard. Then we're using some APIs. We're doing some HTTP posts, JSON toolkits being used. This time, we're going to jump into Niagara. We're going to look at the first couple uh, parts of our block diagram of how we made this happen. And then uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at the HTTP client portion of the whole setup. So let's jump into Niagara now and take a closer look. Okay, so we're in Niagara now, and this is sort of what I created as our main control page from within the uh, supervisor station that we ran out at the summit. Very, very basic, just looking specifically at the information and the control of how it's being done. Wasn't really made as a customer or a, um, a user forward uh, page, so it doesn't look as nice as it could, but it gets the job done. So you can see in the top left, um, I can enable disable things. And then one of the features that we wanted was to be able to select pages. This is important. Uh, we'll talk about this in a moment. And then we had our little uh, look at what's being sent, what's active currently on the Vesta board. And then our block di diagram here. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, string formatter first. The pieces that you can do just with kit control, there's one uh, particular block that I made up as a program object just because for whatever reason it's not included in the base set of objects that are available to us in kit control, uh, but easy enough to do it. And then we'll also look at what the JSON toolkit uh, feature set let us do um, in order to get the right information out to uh, the HTTP client API that we used at the Vesta board. So let's jump into the first section here, our string formatter. We look at these uh, individual blocks. At the top, you'll see that enable point that we were hitting before. Then we have a page select, and that is going to an active page folder. And inside, all we're doing is just a couple of um, string selects so that we can select the uh, correct string, so basically the correct page, to throw out the string that um, we can then move forward with into our JSON toolkit to send out to the board itself. Uh, then we have down here our actual pages, the, the blocks and objects that are being used to create each individual line for each individual page. So the first one we'll go into is our first page. We have a folder for each line. Obviously, the Vesta board has six lines, so we've got six different folders here. Our first one, very easy. It's just literally a string. Um, nothing special happening here. We're not working with any points, so there's nothing special that needs to happen. There are these justify and align, which if you remember before when I talked about the uh, setup with the Vesta board API and how the VBML worked, this is used to determine how you want things to align for multi-lines doesn't really get used uh, in this use case, but it's there in case I wanted to use it. Where things get really interesting is on line two, where we're reading in our space temp and our space humidity. Uh, you can see these numbers uh, look a little bit funny because obviously I'm running this locally on my machine now without the JSON, and without the actual wall module, um, but the concepts still work, just our values are gonna look a little bit weird. So we'll jump into line two. Same thing, we've got our alignment and all that jazz that's normal with VBML, but then we're, we're, making, some, we're making some stuff happen here uh, in order to uh, render out the right information into our J JSON schema that gets sent out to the Vesta board. So the first bit that's happening is uh, we wanted to show a status for the values that are getting shown on the board. In order to do that, we have to read the status from the point that's coming in and then show that on our um, Vesta board spitting out a code. So this little folder here is what's creating our status bit. And inside, we're reading our point. We're determining if anything is in alarm or not. And then we're doing some switching uh, based on that information and spitting that out as our output of the folder. So within each of these uh, 
objects here, these switches, you can see they're not actually switches, they're program objects. And the reason for that is because if we come down here into kit control and util, you'll see we've got a Boolean switch, we've got an enum switch, um, and we've got a numeric switch, but there is not a string switch. And the string switch is actually what we need because uh, everything that the Vesta board wants to see is a string and not a numeric or anything along those lines. So what's happening here is I'm basically just taking in a Boolean value and switching out a string um, from that Boolean value. So if I go into my program object, oops, if I go into the program object, program, and very, very, very simple little a uh, couple lines of code here that are reading those lines in. I'm getting my value of my Boolean and I'm switching based on that. So that is the status bit control. Next, we're since we're just spitting out the, the status bit of that, I need to do some uh, concatenation here in order to make this stuff happen. Here I'm just concatenating that um, string with the uh, 66 which in our case is, is going to mean green in the VBML. We're adding a space onto that. And then we're throwing in our uh, value. And I'm converting this value, you can see, just into an integer because I don't really want any of the uh, decimal places or anything like that. And this status numeric to int is the simplest way to do that. So we're adding those things together using a string concat blot block. If you're working with strings a lot, these blocks are super handy. And then we're spitting that out into another string concat, which is throwing in our units. So we're using a degree symbol with F, and we're adding that into the end of our uh, string that came previously. So we've got that now. Then we're doing some more concatenation. We're throwing in our uh, humidity information, which all of these blocks get us the same functionality as the upper ones, but for the humidity as opposed to the temperature. And we're combining them now so that they are on a uh, single string. And we're also adding in um, a, a little bit of a label here as well at the beginning. So we're concatenating th four different um, pieces or four different strings into a single string. So that's what's happening there. And then um, once we go down further, you can see it's basically the exact same stuff that's happening at each bit. There's some unused code in here on this one, um, but same ideas are happening. We're getting our status, we're adding in a label, and we're appending units at the end, and then we're throwing that out to our template, or our uh, actual line uh, string. So that's done uh, for each line, and as well as for each page. Some of these pages are just literally strings um, so that we could manually put things up on the board if we wanted to. So that's being done there. So those then get thrown into the active page. Our page select selects which page is active and which output we want to be looking at. And then we come over to our active page JSON. This is sort of where the uh, magic happens to get us out to our first API, which is gonna take all of this data in, all of our strings, as we've described in a previous video. Um, take those, all those strings and convert them into a values that the board itself can read and understand to show the correct um, information up on the board. So if we go into this uh, active page JSON, object, you can see at the very top, this is what we're actually outputting. This is the JSON that gets uh, made up for us. And you can see um, we have a bunch of components, and those components are going to be each of our lines. So we've got uh, this first component uh, has a line called Brody Precision, and uh, for the template, oops, And then we've got another line that is showing our space, and then another line that's blank, and then another line that's just a bunch of colors, and then we've got some CO2 information and some uh, particulate matter and VOC information 
that's getting thrown out in the JSON. But the important bit where all of the actual work is done, the configuration is down here at the bottom in our JSON schema object. So we've got these, this first object is our VBML. That's the, the whole object for JSON. Nothing is really happening here, just sort of a holder. Then we've got our components schema array, which is this portion here. And then we've got an object for each one of our components. So our first one, we've got a style. And uh, these styles are just manually set here. I'm not even uh, bringing them in from a value. So we've got a height, and that obviously uh, refers to this. Width refers to this. Um, each one of these properties is creating these individual lines underneath style. If I close up style and go into template, this is where we're actually pulling in uh, from our active page object that we had created before. So if I real quick open up in another tab, we're looking at this active page. And then inside active page, we've got line one select. And we're looking at the out of it. And then we're using a name to show us the uh, binding or, our, or how we want this uh, output to be referred to as in within the JSON. So we have a template here is what we're using. I gotta stop double clicking. Template is what's being used for that name here. And that's what's uh, showing that. So our JSON name is template, and our binding is pulling the out from this object and throwing it in here for the actual value of template. And then if we go down, this is just repeated uh, for each one of the lines. Line two, now we're selecting. We're getting the output of it, and we have our template. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that here. This is uh, number two and then so on and so on. Relatively simple setup, uh, nothing really crazy happening here. It's more so just knowing uh, the parts and pieces that you need to grab from within the JSON toolkit. Because remember, the JSON stuff is not a driver in the traditional sense that we think of. It's a toolkit. It has a bunch of objects and things that you can use uh, to make your life easier. Uh, to make these JSON objects for you. So from there, the next part is we're going to be taking this output of this JSON schema that we we're just looking at because this is what we're creating. That's the actual JSON, and it's available to us as a slot that we can link to uh, for things. And what you'll see is this is actually going to a... HTTP client object and it's getting written out to a point here with a proxy extension and uh, that's what we'll explore next in our next video here. Hopefully this isn't too dense of a um, video and concept uh, but I did want to go over uh, a little bit more depth as to how this stuff was happening because with Niagara there's like 100 ways that you can do everything and um, there's no particular right way to do it. It's just a matter of if you can get the job done with the way that you chose. So uh, nice thing is with Niagara, you could probably get it done. If you have an idea of how you want to do something, um, you've probably got uh, the solution in the box somewhere. Uh, you might need to make a little bit of custom code in order to do it, uh, but you can probably get it done. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next in our series uh, on this Vesta board setup. It'll probably be the last in the series, the next one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, thinking we'll probably loop back on JSON here in the future and just do the basics and the same thing with the HTTP client driver. But I did want to finish up this uh, series on the Vesta board first. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.